welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko, or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 641. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is our fifth in a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. And there's no question of the day for that reason, but we will go back to doing question of the day, Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, once this is all over and management is okay with having more people back in the building, okay? But anyway, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, so today's show, we've all been hearing and reading about, first of all, the coronavirus, COVID-19 outbreak. But what we're hearing more and more about lately is the outbreak that has happened in our prisons. So at Marion and Pickaway County and Southeastern in Lancaster and the Ohio uh, Reformatory for Women. And so it's become kind of like uh, headline news. And it gave me the idea that I should try to connect with somebody who knows a little bit more about what's going on inside the walls of these prisons. And I know a young lady. Her name is Jess. And she's actually been to prison for six years. And uh, instead of graduating high school in 2008, she kind of hung around with the wrong people, uh, went to the wrong places, and in 2009 got into trouble. It was drug-related, and it caused her to have to spend six years in the women's reformatory. So in that six years, though, she was able to be one of the few that took advantage of the situation she was in. She got to learn about herself and a lot more about life, and that, you know, previously she'd been uh, blind to. She just didn't realize there was this other side, I guess, of things. Both her brothers work in the corrections, and she's the youngest, But ironically, she ended up on the other end, meaning inside prison. Kind of ironic, isn't it, when you have two brothers that are corrections officers. So now she has a familiar outlook coming from the inside of the gates and also having her family work in there as well. So she's going to be able to give us some insight as to what's going on inside these facilities. And uh, we'll talk to her a little bit more. Uh, In fact, uh, you know what, let's bring her on now. So Jess, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, thanks for sharing your story or being willing to share your story. And actually what we're going to learn more about is the fact that you actually do share your story a lot in, in hopes of helping other folks who might be maybe getting ready to travel down the wrong path or traveling down the wrong path to Absolutely. hopefully discourage that, right? Absolutely. And you also work with those folks that are still inside who are maybe soon to be released and yes. helping them get reassimilated into society, right? Yes. And what's the name of the agency that you do that through? Well, there's a few of them. There's like the MAGA. And, um, I worked for a man named John Rush to start my whole adventure in it. Uh, he owns Clean Turn. Clean Turn, it's called. Yes, he okay, got so- me in to a lot. He's a, um, He does demolition and they clean homes, but he does a lot of reentry for absolutely everybody. Okay. And so clean turn, is that turning your life around and getting clean? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it, it's reteaching everyone how to get back into the workforce in a proper way, constructive way. Um, hmm. Shows them step by step. Basically, they help with housing. Anything you need help with, as long as you're willing to help yourself, he will lead in the right direction. No, no matter what. Is this just the women's reformatory that he helps? No, this is absolutely everyone. It's out here in Columbus, actually. It's uh, men and women. It's one he will help absolutely anyone for the workforce. Interesting. 
Now, you also told me a story about how he hires, only hires people who uh, were formerly incarcerated. And that if yeah, they... that's his his main mission um, is the reentry and and sometimes honestly it's not even just incarcerated it's anyone you know had a rough life been down the wrong road maybe not always got incarcerated over it but you know life issues drugs okay family issues what you know that whole strain of things okay and you also said that uh, he owns rental property right right and he that he won't rent to somebody unless they've been what clean for a year. That actually was a separate program, um, but that was through um, Integrity um, Services here. But they, yeah, they run a only um, felon-friendly housing where you basically have to work your way for 12 months, no mistakes or, you know, slip-ups, whatnot, you would call it, to continue on living in these homes and working your way for okay. a whole year. So a mistake, does that mean getting in trouble with the law or does that mean failing a drug test or both? All of the above. I mean, anything that wouldn't be your considered structure living, um, okay. constructiveness, you know, anything against what you should be doing to live the life you need to be living. Okay. Do you mind sharing how old you are now? 30. You're 30. So you've been out for six years. Mm hmm Yeah? As long as you're in. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So which six years went by faster? Honestly, I would have to say, since I've been out, it seems like a week, but really? it's been, I mean, it, it's all went very quickly considering the route that I took getting out, uh, rebuilding well, correctly. Oh, okay. For a minute, I thought you were going to say you, you, you broke out or something. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just considering the way I got out. No, I'm just right, kidding. Right. I'm just kidding. No, just um, I, you know, had had a lot to fight for, and it keeps you fairly busy. Really, it, your life just flies by while you're trying to do what you got to do, make up for lost time. Right. Now, did your brothers work? I'm um, sorry, your brothers both work at these facilities, not where you were. Did right. They, they come both are in, in corrections. Did they come and visit you? Um, no, they were the tough love kind of, um, I had to rebuild trust and a relationship with them to be able to get back into their lives. Um, hmm. I, they would, they were still in contact with me, but they wouldn't come see me or, you know, they waited till I was free. Okay. But okay. they did the tough love as brothers. Okay. And you feel like that was good for you? Oh, absolutely. It was motivating more than anything. I mean, they've okay. led the way a lot more than most would have patience for. And now they're both in your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about the dental care in uh, the Women's Reformatory. Oh, man. It's not ideal. It's very uncomfortable. Um, they do their best with what they have, I believe. Um, what do they have, 1930s equipment? Yeah, and sometimes it, it may seem like um, some of the people that work in the dentistry in there aren't very either familiar or 100% sure with their career as much also as the lifestyle in there. Right. You know, there's a big difference, and it's different than working out here than it would be in there. Right. Um, they're not able to make it. I mean, it's not a place to be made comfortable, obviously, but... Um, they make it a little more uncomfortable sometimes, I think. They do. So did you find yourself only seeking dental care if you had a toothache? Yeah, I would try my best to not ever go. Um, I went twice. And it was just not a great experience at all. Okay. Um, they do their work, and then they send you on your way. You know, there's no... No pain feeling pills. Feeling better about it. No, <laughs> no, no pain yeah, pills, it's literally, nothing. No, you... Get your cotton put in your mouth and you're on your way very quickly. Everything's mm. done very quickly and just you're in a line basically for the dentist. Mm. Okay. Yeah. They don't have any incentive to be kind or gentle, right? No, not at all. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. I've heard that. And I also, you know, I'm just trying to picture who goes to dental school and says, when I graduate, I want to work in a prison. You know what I mean? I don't know that that's a... a a career right. choice usually. I don't know if it's maybe part time work. 
I've never really I feel like maybe it's it. the last option to me is what it seems like maybe. Yeah. It's you know they're always needed. I mean any medical staff is always needed in a prison, you know, because it is different, a whole different lifestyle. Yeah. Even to work in, you know, if you're in there 8 hours to 10 hours a day, you're you're going to adapt to some of that lifestyle as well. Okay. So it's a little different. Right. I do remember I went uh once to the uh women's reformatory. And I talked to a group of women that were taking the dental laboratory class to become dental lab technicians. Mm -hmm. And when I pulled up to the gate, they have these mirrors. They're mounted on the side of your car. They're not the handheld ones. They're just there. And then they, your car, they can see under your car. Yeah. <laughs> and they have the right to search you if they want. And there's a point where it says, do not stop, like when you're driving in. Do not stop. I guess if you stop, they shoot you or something. <laughs> or they come run, run, running it's, after you. <laughs> it's not necessarily that serious, but... No? Um, I mean, they make it out to be that way, I guess, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess that's a, a social thing from the outside looking in. Looks it's designed crazier. for newbies like me that don't understand... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just scares them. Like, nope. Yeah. I mean, it is a scary thing, but once you're in there and you learn that it's not all bad, that it is for the better, you know, it's uh -huh. a, a different outlook on it. Okay. So you, you're a plumber. Yeah. How did you yeah. become a plumber in or out of prison? In, actually. Really? Um, I was thrown into it. I didn't know anything. I uh, was kind of thrown into it by just working maintenance and took it and ran with it. Ended up with plumbing, HVAC certifications, mach all kinds of mach machinery I can operate now. Um, a lot. I mean, I got a lot of my training certifications and just hands-on experience um, in there, actually. Wow. So ORW, the Ohio Reformatory for Women, actually does rehabilitate people. They do. Yes, there are a few of us that do get rehabilitated. Cool. There are. There, it is possible. <laughs> and I think I told you that I'm on the board of a charity called MCS Touch. Yes. Which is also a reentry uh, agency that helps people get reassimilated, and that you knew of them. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've mm -hmm. heard of them when I've went to certain conventions for different options of reentry. Okay. Okay. Now. We mentioned early in the show that one of the reasons I have you on is because I want to find out what your insight is to how the virus is affecting these uh, prisons, both right. the inmate population and the corrections officers, uh, two of which are your brothers. Right. And so I think when we come back from our break, that's probably what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so can you hang with me? Absolutely. Okay, folks. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 641. We have Jess with us. She is a former, uh, was formerly incarcerated. She's now rehabilitated and works as a plumber and a few other things. And when we come back, we're going to learn more about what's going on inside the prisons with the coronavirus. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight She said people don't take the time Hey, people don't take the time Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2 You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. My team and I wish you the best during this coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. We hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy. Although we have been unable to provide routine care during this stay-at-home order, we have still been providing emergency dental care for those in need. We're really looking forward to getting back to providing you with the complete dental care for which we are known. After all, your teeth aren't cleaning themselves, your gum disease isn't going away on its own, and your cavities aren't getting any smaller. Once we get the go-ahead to open back up, you can count on us to be ready to make sure that both you 
and us are safe, we are implementing several strategies. Our office will be pre-sanitized. Patients will most likely check in from their car so no one will be sitting in a crowded reception room. Temperatures will be taken. We will mark our hallways one way so people won't accidentally cross paths. And thankfully, unlike most dental offices, we have doors on all 10 of our treatment rooms. And by closing the doors, we can minimize the spread of germs and microbes from one patient to another. We look forward to serving your dental needs now and into the future. Call us at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. Johanna and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 641. With me on the phone is Jess McLaughlin. And Jess is on the phone because she was incarcerated for six years, got in trouble with drugs when she was a teenager, and uh, served her time, learned a lot of skills in prison. And she has two brothers that work as corrections officers. And so I thought, who better than her to talk about what's going on with the coronavirus, COVID-19, inside the walls of these prisons that we keep reading about and hearing about. So Jess, let's get on to that. You have people that that you still know that are inside the Ohio Women's Reformatory. And so tell me about what those uh, what those women are telling you. Uh, most of them, it's a, a lot of change in there for them. It's already an uncomfortable living style without something like this making it even worse. A lot of them that I do talk to have understanding. Some of them do not. At first, when the shipments of food and stuff, everything was stopped out here, so it was stopped for in there as well. Like They didn't get fed as much as they did normally. Mm. They were all put on their beds for long periods of time because they just weren't sure how to deal with the situation, obviously. They were just told to lie in bed and stay there? Basically, yeah. It's a lockdown technique that they use to be able to control for 3,000 women. Because these are dormitory type rooms. They're not individual cells, right? Right. There are only certain, a select few buildings that have two people cells, but typically it's open dorm. Okay. And it's silly because even the beds aren't six feet apart, Mm. so it kind of makes things a little difficult for them to have those changes. Hmm. So people started getting sick? Or they just, or was it just because the world was changing because the stores were closing and uh, businesses were closing? W- what was the initial, uh, I guess, response? What was happening at the beginning besides the food uh, short, uh, shortages? Um, at the beginning, it was just um, individuals were sick, but it wasn't. For a little period of time, it was going unnoticed due to the fact that it is inside prison. So nobody knew it was the coronavirus at the time. Like they don't pay attention enough sometimes to the inmates to know if it was something like that or not. Okay. So most inmates feel that maybe it was already existing before anything started to be done about it before it became a big deal. Okay. They they were a little late on maybe the actions for the situation. Okay. And these are the women that you know now. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, well, first of all, do we, do we now know of cases of, of COVID-19, both inmate and corrections officers in the women's reformatory? Yes, yeah, so it goes either uh, there are both staff and inmates. I believe the inmate number is higher. Any deaths? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, well, that's good. Not yet, at least, right? Right, not out, not out of ORW, no. Not that I'm aware. Okay. And what do you... Um, what are you hearing from your brothers then? Now, are you first of all, are you do you fear for your brothers? Do you fear for the fact that they go to work at a place where this disease is relatively rampant? I do. Uh, one of my brothers is working from home, luckily. Uh, the other one is still going into work daily, and I've even tried to tell him like I didn't feel comfortable with him going in there just due to the fact that um, it's 
more uncontrollable in there than it is out here. He's exposed to it a lot more. It is his job to go there and no matter what, sick or not, he has to go in there and do his job to make a living. But at the same time, it's once the numbers start crawling so high, I, I don't see a reason in my head to keep going. So you wish he would have just taken a leave of absence? or Yeah, I would have rather that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has a child, so you don't want to bring that stuff home to your kids. You don't want to be quarantined from your family due to going to work every day. Right. Due to, you know, it's very hard to separate your life like that and be comfortable and everyone be safe. Right. You hear about people living in their basement or staying in a motor home or a, a travel trailer in the driveway. Either of right. them doing that? Um. Well, no, he... The, Luckily, my oldest brother lives alone, but he wasn't able to see his child um, through it so that his child was not um, for it. How old is his child? Nine. Nine. Ten. Excuse me. Ten. Ten, I'm sorry. And so his son didn't want him to go to work or didn't want dad to get too close so he wouldn't catch it or what? They just didn't want him to be exposed to it at all since he was so exposed to it on a daily basis, no matter what. It wasn't safe for him to be around him as often and every day and when he gets home from work or anything like that. Because he doesn't know if he was exposed to it or not. Interesting. And take it home to your kids. You're responsible for that. And it just makes things very hard to, for, to separate everybody that works in there. Right. So... What would your suggestion be for, I mean, the state still has a prison to run. If you were in charge, if you were the governor, what would you do? Right, what what I would do. I feel that he's done actually, unfortunately, it doesn't seem that way, but he's doing what he can, you know. No, yeah. None of us were prepared for this. None of us had, you know, a plan for this. So to make it comfortable in an environment in there, especially, is going to be a complicated thing. It's already an uncomfortable environment already. And for that being raised by something like this, it's very hard for anyone to deal with, I think, correctly. Rather than just trying to keep everyone healthy, alive, it's not going to be comfortable. Everyone thinks that he's able to make it comfortable for everyone, but no decision on this is going to be a comfortable change. Right. I think that trying to separate everyone was a good idea. It was the best. We all needed to really sit down and just stay away from each other to let this pass. That's right. almost impossible for one person to control population. I personally feel so. I feel he did his best. He wasn't trying to force us to do anything and wanted us to do it on our own. Okay. Okay. So that, you know, that makes it a little like he gave us the opportunity, but it's it's hard. But what right or wrong decision is there in that position? Right. So, you know, it's time for us to go to another break. I find this very interesting. I want to delve into a little more, if we can, into the men's prisons, because I know you have insight to that, too. And so hang with me. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 641, and we'll be right back. You can't take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko, and with me on the phone is Jess McLaughlin, a formerly incarcerated individual. She's 30 now. She went to prison for six years when she was, what, 18 and because of drugs and has turned her life around, and now she helps other people trying to keep, first of all, keep them from uh, going to prison and secondly, helping those that are in get reassimilated when they get out. So first of all, Jess, that's, uh, um, I'm, you know, 
want to congratulate you on the work that you're doing there. Thank you. Now, what do you think about the people who say that the governor should release like 20,000 prisoners because of the coronavirus? I'm like, there's mixed emotions with that. There is, I feel a lot of the judicial system is already a little mixed up on who's in there for what and how long. So the stipulations on who they would choose out of that is where I see an issue. Um, a lot of people are in there for a reason, some of which are over sentenced, some of which are under sentenced. And at a time like this, I'm not sure a sickness would really be a reason to go through that rather than it should be gone through already. Right. Um, high population in the prisons is already an issue. So I feel that this concern should have already been dealt with in other ways rather than a sentence to be a reason to. So wait a minute. I think I misunderstood what you just said. Okay. What do you mean by it should have already been dealt with? Uh, overcrowding? Or not as many yeah. people sent yeah. to prison? Yes. With them wanting to get 20,000 inmates out over the sickness, I think that um, the overcrowding already was an issue before the sickness. Okay. So you think there are people in there that shouldn't be or people that are in there that are not a, a threat to society that should be allowed out? Right. Yeah, they're, they're, I just think the stipulation should definitely be paid a lot of attention to due to what people they do let out at a time like this. You wouldn't want to rush that decision, I don't feel like, on every individual. Right. And everyone's rushing it and throwing all kinds of ifs, ands, and buts into the situation of making the decision. And then and that would be a hard decision to pick that many people out of the whole incarcerated population. It wouldn't be fair to some, or it would be overly fair to some. Right. And no. all in all, you're, you're letting inmates out onto the street over a sickness. Right. And that wouldn't be fair to their victims. So if somebody raped right. somebody or somebody killed somebody. Right. Uh, you can't forget about the crime because there's a sickness. You right. know? So but there are some that I believe may be a suitable you know, situation. Okay. So most of them you're saying should stay, but there are a few right. cases where maybe like yourself, a drug charge that maybe right. if you were still in, you might have been one of the ones you think might have qualified for being allowed out at least house arrest until this was over. Yes, at least. And, it, and it, you would have to show some type of interest in change, I think, already. Oh, got it. Got it. So they already have to be on the path of being uh, rehabilitated before they would be right. one of the ones that should qualify right. for getting out. Right. Okay. So it sounds harsh, but people did something to get themselves thrown in prison. And if that happens to cause them to die from the coronavirus, that's maybe just, I don't know, part of the it sentence. It could happen almost. out here too, though. There you, you know, go. It's not yeah. just in there. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. it sounded like harsh to say. A so, little bit. Yes. But I'm kind of <laughs> glad to hear that you understand and, and you were in. You yeah. understand that sometimes that's what happens, huh? Yeah, that's just fair. Fair is fair. Or rather, I've won the inside or the outside. Fair mm -hmm. is fair, ultimately. Okay. Well, what, what words of wisdom do you have for somebody who is um, 16, 17, 18, who may be making bad choices? Well, it's a horrible idea. <laughs> don't make you bad choices. You will learn. Everyone is right that are telling you all the things you don't want to believe. They're right. And you really got to open your mind that not everyone's against you. They're okay. just trying to help you. Okay. Well, that's pretty short and sweet, but makes a lot of sense. So basically, yeah. people get kind of depressed and think the whole world's against them and they should be allowed to do whatever they want even if it is illegal and then they do it and they find themselves behind bars yeah then they're mad and then they're mad okay all right well i really appreciate you being on the show i thank you for your time and i want to commend you for being rehabilitated yourself and for helping others and um, i uh, can tell people that you're a great plumber and you're great to work with and uh, that's how i know jess by the way guys is um she's done some work for me so <laughs> It was a great pleasure. <laughs> so when I turn on the hot water, it's actually hot. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. And have a great day. You too. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kvitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye.
This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speak.